Advanced cardiac life support is a funny term because of that first word, advanced. Yes, it's advanced over BLS, but it's not advanced for the expert resuscitationist, which all of us should be striving to become. There are lots of things that we can and should be doing beyond ACLS to make our resuscitation and cardiac arrest better. Many of the things that we can and should be doing are micro pieces that together make the resuscitation better. And one of those is the use of continuous quantitative end tidal CO2 monitoring. There are a number of places where continuous waveform end tidal CO2 can be really helpful in resuscitation and cardiac arrest. And let's start with the C component of CBA, the circulation. Often when we are providing compressions, it can be difficult to assess the efficacy of those compressions. End tidal CO2 can help us there. So we put the end tidal CO2 on the ET tube or on the superglottic device, whatever we're using to oxygenate the patient. And we look at that waveform while we're doing compressions. If we see dropping end tidal CO2 while we're providing compressions, what that tells us is the cardiac output that's being generated by those compressions is inadequate. And we're gonna have to change something to make those compressions better. So possibly this is that we have shifted and we're not compressing the heart properly. So this can be a check on the position of where we're providing compressions. It may also simply be that the compressions themselves have changed in quality. They're not quite as robust as they were, meaning that the person providing those compressions might have tired out and now it's time to switch that compressor out. We can also use that quantitative waveform end tidal CO2 as an indicator of return of spontaneous circulation. If we see the end tidal CO2 jump during our compressions, that means that the patient has likely obtained ROSC and has improved perfusion. An article by Crickmer and colleagues entitled The Association Between End Tidal CO2 and Return of Spontaneous Circulation After Out-of-Hospital Cardiac Arrest with Pulseless Electrical Activity, published in Resuscitation 2021, showed that a rise in end tidal CO2 by more than 20 millimeters of mercury was highly specific for return of spontaneous circulation in patients with PEA. In addition, the authors conclude that if you see an uptrending end tidal CO2 during the resuscitation, that should be a marker to continue resuscitation because you're doing a good job. You might actually be closer to getting that patient back unless there's overwhelming clinical evidence to the contrary. Continuous waveform end tidal CO2 also can play a really important role in your intubation and cardiac arrest, as well as your intubation confirmation. We typically see the use of the qualitative or calorimetric end tidal CO2, but these devices are inadequate in cardiac arrest for a number of reasons. Number one is that when you're using that calorimetric device, you really have to follow it for six breaths. We know that we don't do that. We often will do one or two and we're like, oh, look, we have color change. And then we're done and we stop looking at it. In low flow states, like cardiac arrest, there might not actually be an adequate amount of CO2 coming up from the lungs to change that litmus paper. This could lead you to pulling a tube that's actually in the right place because you're misled by that change in color or the absence of change in color. Another place that the calorimetric device falls short is that if it's touched by any vomitus, it's gonna turn yellow, even though it might not be in the right place. So that's an important limitation to know. So instead of using those calorimetric devices, we should be using continuous waveform quantitative end tidal CO2 to confirm our intubation, as well as to confirm that the tube is continuing to sit in the right place throughout the resuscitation. It's in these low flow states like cardiac arrest where that continuous waveform is really valuable. You can also use that continuous waveform end tidal CO2 with a bag valve mask or with a supraglottic device to know that you are adequately delivering breaths. Unlike oxygen saturation, if you're delivering breaths adequately, the end tidal CO2 is going to give you an immediate feedback telling you, we know that O2 saturation can lag, and so you might be in the dark for 60 or 90 seconds of whether you are actually providing adequate breaths to that patient. Finally, in many systems, we have switched to using superglottic devices as our primary airway while we are running those codes, while we're running that cardiac arrest resuscitation. And end tidal CO2 can be really valuable here as well to know not only that your superglottic device was placed properly, but that it continues to sit in the right place because sometimes they can shift during CPR. The bottom line here really is that you should be using quantitative, continuous waveform end tidal CO2 during all of your cardiac arrest resuscitations. There's a huge value in knowing the quality of your compressions, whether you need to change the position or the compressor itself, 
and whether you have obtained return of spontaneous circulation. And in terms of airway, they're very useful in these patients with low flow states to confirm your intubation or to confirm that you are providing good breaths through BVM or supraglottic device. Great points about untitled CO2 and cardiac arrest. To review and add a few other key things, remember that in any critically ill patient, a sudden decrease or loss of untitled CO2 may indicate the need for CPR to be started in the first place. And when it comes to assessing how good chest compressions are, untitled CO2 is an indirect assessment of quality of chest compressions, the location, the rate, the depth. So adequate chest compressions correlate well with untitled CO2 readings of 20 or more. Then there's detecting ROSC. So a rise of n tidal CO2 of more than 20 is highly specific for ROSC in patients with PEA arrest. So if you're going to remember one number when it comes to n tidal CO2 in cardiac arrest, it's 20. So 20 or more reading of n tidal CO2 suggests adequate chest compressions, and an n tidal CO2 of more than 20 is highly specific for ROSC in patients with PEA arrest. Then the question comes up, do trends in n tidal CO2 help? Well, an uptrending n tidal CO2 during resuscitation suggests that you should continue with resuscitative efforts unless there's a pile of clinical evidence to the contrary. And what about confirming endotracheal tube placement? Well, n tidal CO2 can be useful for confirmation of airway placement and as a subsequent guide for adequate delivery of breaths using BVM or supraglottic device, as well as ventilation rates. Swami did not talk about using n tidal CO2 to call the code, I suspect because it's a bit controversial and can be misleading, but a general rule of thumb that has been thrown around is that if the n tidal CO2 is consistently less than 10 for 3 to 5 minutes after 20 minutes of high-quality CPR and resuscitative efforts, you are very unlikely to achieve ROSC. And the reason it's controversial is because calling the code is a lot more complicated, as outlined by Weingart in our latest cardiac arrest main episode. And title CO2 just isn't sensitive enough, so it should be only used as an adjunctive data point in decisions of termination of the code. It's also important to understand that there are multiple potential co-founders that can elevate or decrease end title CO2 levels, like hypothermia or hyperthermia, for example. So extreme or trending values should be more useful than unwavering mid-range levels, and we should not depend on end tidal CO2 in the patient who's found frozen in a snowbank, for example. Finally, a good deferential to know is the one for sudden flattening of the end tidal CO2 waveform. So a sudden flatline in end tidal CO2 may be due to cardiac arrest, but it also may be due to ventilator disconnection or esophageal intubation or capnography obstruction, or the airway device dislodging. So much to know about end tidal CO2 and cardiac arrest. Thank you so much, Swami. 